Lewis, we are working today on a 2004 Volvo V70. Need to change out these rather gnarly scored discs and I'll do the pads at the same time of course. Already loosened off the nuts uh, so that'll be, uh, that'll be nice and easy to get those out when it's up on the axle stands. And so of course safety first. Handbrakes on the rear wheel, need to chuck the front wheels. I'm using a trolley jack, but you really don't need to. I'm actually going to be using the trolley jack on the connection point for the jack that comes with the wheel change kit. So you could use that just to get it up on axle stands. Uh, I'm using three ton axle stands here. Rubber bung on the top, and that's going to go onto that point there. So on we go. going to slow me down a bit today but I'm absolutely determined to show to you guys that you can do these jobs just using basic hand tools so I'm going to do this entire job as I say just using basic hand tools usually I'd be whipping these off with an impact driver but it's not something that everyone's got if I'm completely honest I'll probably use the impact driver on the other side but this will do us for now these desks really are and this was uh, issued as a Ministry of Transport uh, MOT test advisory. The state of those. Actually a chunk out of the top of this one. Time to go. Right. Next job. Let's deal with that brake caliper. Okay so first things first let's take the uh, the outer part of the caliper off and then we'll uh, remove the bracket that will allow us to get the, uh, the disc out. Just using a fairly solid flat bladed screwdriver here I'm going to prise the anti-rattle spring here forwards and then we should be able to just pop it over the end there. Now what's useful when you're doing this is a nice stout pair of pliers as well because these things never come out particularly cleanly that in a safe place. So this here is now held on by two slide pins and the slide pins are accessed through the back. Now I've seen hundreds of videos on this subject but I haven't seen one that actually shows you what you'll see when you stick your head over the top into the, uh, the wheel arch and bearing in mind that we're a, a channel dedicated here to the home mechanic. Um, these are the, the plastic caps that sit in a rubber tube that surrounds the end of the slide pin. So there's one of these a little bit further down as well. I'll let you imagine that one. But uh, there you go. Okay, so that's the plastic caps off. Put those in a safe place. Next, we need a, uh, a 7mm hex key. And the 7mm hex key just loosens off the end of the slide pin. These aren't massively torqued. It just help us to have a fairly lengthy, uh, fairly lengthy socket. Oh, sorry, ratchet on this one. And don't just keep ratcheting this forever. It will get to a point where it's not going to turn anymore. And you have to kind of wiggle it around to try and extract. In the, uh, the rubber sometimes. What happens is the uh, the rubber itself sticks onto the side of the slide pin. One of the important parts of this job is to clean that up. Here we go. Now you'll see as this comes out of here, it's going to be covered in gunge. Can you see that there? So that, that corrosion, is what causes these things to stick and if they don't stick then the, when the brake clamps 
one side of it isn't going to release that can cause uneven brake pad wear um, squeaking squealing overheating all sorts of problems but uh, that is the slide pin keep that in the safe place going to repeat that same operation on the lower one this one can be a little bit awkward to get at tip for you is if you uh, come in with an extension bar from here you can see where my hand is you can get in at it more easily and myself I've got a flex head uh, ratchet here so I can I can get in without needing to worry about that but that's the workaround if you uh, if you don't have a flex head ratchet and just as point of reference here I actually do have an extension bar let me just show you that the other option to get these out a little bit more easily Okay, so the slide pins are out in principle. This piece here is now loose. You can see it moves just a tiny bit. I'm going to give it a, a bonk with a rubber hammer in a minute, a rubber mallet. Um, but the problem we've got here is that the pads are clamped in inside the rim. There's quite a lip here on the rim because this is so old and worn out. So, well, I'm going to have to release some of the uh, uh, brake fluid in the caliper itself. And that will allow the brake pads to be expanded out. We can slide it off. So this here, this little rubber cap, that's where you find the bleed nipple. I'm just going to go and get a jar and some tubing so we don't leave a big puddle of uh, brake fluid all over the road. Now it's really important to think both of the environment and also importantly your neighbours. Um, if you're working regularly on your vehicle at home, the last thing you want is uh, disapproval from folks who have to live with unsightly pools of oil and so on outside their, uh, their homes. So uh, be considerate, always use some kind of catch pan, even just an old baking tray from the oven is going to do the job. Um, but you know, maybe just don't tell your messes. Right, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using a socket. This is a 6 spline, not a 12 spline socket, importantly to get maximum purchase. Um, using a, uh, this is an 11 mil to just loosen off this bleed nut here, bleed nipple. Now that's a bit tight. The last thing I want is for this to tear off, so I'm going to get some penetrating oil into that. Another reason to have the uh, catch pan underneath. Now, I'm not sponsored, but a solid product recommendation. This Action Can RP90 is phenomenal stuff. That's going to blast a bit of that on there. I'll just leave it a few minutes. Okay, a couple of minutes later. One of the reasons I'm being so careful with this is it's not solid, it's a hollow bolt. Uh, of course, the brake fluid has to come out of the end of it. So it's not as... Uh, capable of dealing with the normal levels of violence we, uh, we apply to things that are stuck. You have to be a bit more sympathetic to these ones so penetrating oil has been in there giving it a couple of blasts in the meantime. Hopefully at this point we should and avoid again avoid putting too much torsion on it. I'm going to push with one hand pull with the other. There we go that's moving. Lovely. Now I don't actually want to uh, let any brake fluid out with this particular tool. I'm going to use a ring spanner for that. Um, but what I did want to be sure of was that uh, it was turning before sticking this 12 spline ring spanner on. There's less contact area with each of the faces, more likely to round it off. These things do tend to rust and as I say, they can tear out leaving you need to then all sorts of problems trying to figure out what to do with your uh, your caliper to get it off. So, right, bear in mind I've got the catch pan underneath here and all of this is getting stripped off. Uh, I'm just going to put a piece of rubber hose onto that and just let it drain off into the pan. This is not a pretty job, but all we want to do is release some of the pressure, we can't push it back up the pipe and I fundamentally disagree with, you know, just compressing the cylinder to squeeze the old brake fluid back up the pipe to 
get the pads out. That's a nonsense, basically. What you've got inside the caliper itself is the most used, burned, old uh, brake fluid in your system. What you want to do is get that out as part of this exercise and then replace it with fresh stuff from the top, pushing it through uh, the system. So anyway, here we go. Let's open that up. And with that open, I should be able to get my uh, weapon of choice, which is this large screwdriver, into here. Now, it doesn't matter to me because I'm replacing the disc and I'm replacing the pad. It doesn't matter about giving it a bit of violence using the disc and the pad, or the pad plate anyway. Uh, but what I'm doing here is squeezing some of that brake fluid back out. You can see it's starting to fill here. So I'll just open that up a little bit more. Bit of movement to last right now this is going to potentially damage the uh, brake pads in fact you would never do this if there was any possibility you were going to put these pads straight back on you have to be a lot more a lot more sympathetic but i can be as brutal as i like for this on account of the fact that both the disc and the pads are toast and are going result all right now again I've seen lots of folks say that you can uh, comfortably just let these hang on the brake pipes and all the rest of it I again fundamentally disagree with that never do anything at all that could even partially compromise your brakes these should at all times be supported um, the easiest way to do this let me just bring you back in over the top here. So I'm just going to release this rubber grommet here that holds the ABS sensor wire in position. A bit of a struggle because this is old and perished, but let me get that out of there. Come on. support that caliper on top of the uh, spring and the uh, wishbone here, the control arm. Right, so next thing to do is to get the uh, caliper bracket off. And we've got this old tatty pad as well, let's just get that out there. Here's a useful example of why brakes bind. So I've taken the caliper off, but the, er, the outer uh, pad still remains attached onto this plate. Now, in this particular caliper, there isn't separate uh, hardware that gets replaced each time. You have to grease these points, but you can see here that that is so full of gunk that it's not actually separating at all. That should be free to slide along that rail. Same at the top. Now that means that this pad is never releasing uh, from the uh, from the disc when it's spinning and it's probably one of the main reasons why this is so very badly scored. It's because this is always on. So excessive wear on one pad, excessive wear on the disc, all because that little joint there, this piece should be free to slide up and down along that rail, it can't. So we're going to use some copper grease once this has been wire brushed down uh, to allow that to slide. That's all it takes, a bit of copper grease. And it's the same at the top end here, not quite as bad, but you can see it's, it's well bedded in there and bound up. So uh, this here needs to come out. And 
and uh, that is going to take a bit of violence, I think. Again, I don't have to be too sensitive to this one because all of this is junk. Give that a good whack. I'm going to use some orange violence here. Nice. Now a little taste of penetrating oil might not be a bad idea in here. Of course, you never usually use spray oil around brakes, but uh, the disc and the pad are both going and what I really want to do here is try and free this up so that there's as little petting and damage to that sliding surface as possible. brakes didn't work properly that is supposed to freely slide and I've just had to beat it out with a mallet so that friction between that mating surface there and that slider as that fits in there it's supposed to slide forwards and backwards when the uh, um, the slider pin is uh, released there's your problem. Okay, so that needs a good bit of cleaning up. I'll take this off anyway. But we want to get that surface in there that's all full of gunge, at the very least, as clean and shiny as this top surface here. Ideally, nice and smooth, and then we'll use copper grease to lubricate that for the new pads. Okay, bringing you in once again with the, the bird's eye view. There are two 13mm bolts that we need to remove, one at the top, one at the bottom. These release uh, the uh, caliper carrier bracket. So these are 13mm sockets. Be careful that you don't knock the, uh, uh, the caliper as you go. Um, these can take some force to release. Again, if you've got one, now's a good time to wheel out the uh, impact drivers, but again, you're gonna need all sorts of extension bars and so on to get at this. So for my money, just a uh, good stout old fashioned ratchet is uh, probably your best bet. Again, not sponsored, but these ones from Halfords have 72 teeth in them. The Halfords advanced range, I'm sure one of the other manufacturers these days have equivalents. This is plenty solid enough for these jobs. Because they've got 72 teeth, effectively, it's a, uh, a ratchet every five degrees. You can use them in confined spaces like these quite easily. And of course, you come in at the top, you get a little bit more movement. Now, these are often held in with thread locker. You need to put thread locker on them when you stick them back in, so make sure you've got some uh, red thread lock for this task. We'll wire brush this. Uh, Imagine it's going to be fairly liberally coated. Yeah, there we go, red thread locker. Okay, same at the bottom. So you can see here the problem. Now here, this pad has, has actually uh, scuffed the surface. That was when I was beating it out with the mallet. And you can see how shiny it should be. So the, the pad slides along that, same on the other side and at the bottom here. And these are supposed to be non-corroded, lubricated with copper grease. And that's really something that you can't 
miss as a step. If you do miss that as a step, inevitably they'll end up sticking on you, they'll end up binding and you'll have problems. Uh, so when you're doing this job, you need two types of specialist grease. Copper grease for the metal on metal contact and for the back of the pads as well. Um, because sometimes the back of the pads at the contact points here can rust as these have, give you all sorts of squeals and other offensive noises. Um, and we need some uh, specialist silicon grease oil. Uh, I'll show you the uh, stuff I use later on, but that's for the slider pins to stop the slider pins from adhering to the rubber sleeve that they sit in. Okay, anyway, let's crack it on. So the last part of removal is that, and these things are a massive pain in the ass. What they're for is to hold the disc in place during the assembly process, because of course once you've got the uh, uh, caliper bracket on there, all the way around, it holds the disc in place. It can't fall out from that point forward, but this tiny, tiny little bolt isn't doing anything except holding that on. Ordinarily, the wheel studs are actually gonna, sorry, the bolts are gonna um, pin this onto the hub, so that's completely redundant. Because of that, these things are usually quite cheap, not very heavy duty, often sheer. Now you'll notice there are five points that we can go through here, and if this does shear, it's not the end of the world. Um, it will be full of bolt on the inside though, so we may need to re-drill and re-tap one of the other holes, but uh, hopefully that won't happen. This is a 10mm, again I'm going at it with a 6 spline socket, not 12 spline, in order to maximise the amount of purchase that we have. Uh, I'm going to take my time with this one, I might even get a bit of heat as well, just to uh, to make sure that that's going to separate without shearing off, because when they do shear it adds probably half an hour, 45 minutes to the job and requires you to have metal drills, taps and dies, most people don't have. Anyway. Let's get a blowtorch. Okay, so since we have released the handbrake, the uh, pads, the handbrake pads which press out on the other side of this have been released, so we should, and this is a bit loose, should be able to pull it up enough to pull it off. There we go. Nice. Let's clean it up. Okay, so standard brake cleaner. I'm going to use a, uh, a copper bristle brush here. Get as much of the crud out as we possibly can. I want these surfaces to be clean. And then once they're clean, we're going to put some copper grease on here. Mention it again, special metal on metal grease to stop binding. No special products for this, just a good old fashioned elbow grease and a wire brush. Okay, you've got to be very careful not to get grease back on that surface. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the disc on the wrong way around and clean the rear face of it. Because 
I don't want to get any uh, grease that's currently on the, the new disc. I don't want to get any of that onto the handbrake pads. So this is a uh, very important but often overlooked thing to do. We'll just use the car itself as a handy tool post. Give it a good blast. Bit of a brush around. You don't have to do this on the front, of course there is only the handbrake on the back. Okay. Next up, copper grease. Now there are lots of choices here, but what I'm going to use is uh, Holtz Copper Grease, Triple QX is also good. I'll show you what they look like in a sec so you know what you're looking for when you go into the uh, motor factors. Something like that. The important detail is it's a copper grease and what this is for is to stop metal on metal binding. We don't need a massive lot. Let's give that a good coat. Okay, so that is coated with a thin layer of grease that's going to stop the new disc from rusting on as the old one did. Okay, so on we go. Remembering the position of that little hole there. And what I recommend you do is stick a couple of these wheel bolts in first, just to hold it nice and tight rather than trying to use the little bolt that holds the thing in place to locate it. So if you do that and it's slightly offline as you over torque it to try and pull things through it'll basically shear that little bolt off and that is a massive pain to deal with. As I say, typically you just drill and thread the other side in one of the other four holes. And that is nice and tight, not going anywhere. So now we can put that little bolt back in. Okay, so it's all greased up in place good and solid nice and true so I'm just going to tighten this up it doesn't have to be massively tight all it's doing is holding that desk in place and there's nothing else to do it so we're not going to go crazy with that that's good enough right so the next job is to clean up the caliper and then reassemble it all it's starting to get a bit uh, hot out in the sun today so I've just come into the shade to uh, clean up these slide pins. I'm going to use uh, some Silvo, it's very light Brasso, either Silvo or Brasso will do the same job. But this is a lint wadding that's uh, very, very handy for cleaning this kind of stuff. Now, as I say, I'm determined to prove in this video that you can do this without needing any fancy damn tools if I was doing this. For a paid job or uh, wasn't recording I'd probably be sticking this in the uh, metal lathe and spinning this as a polish it but uh, the effect is much the same. Just going to clean these up and then we're going to apply special grease this is a metal free permanent lubricant uh, especially for disc brakes and that will lubricate this slide pin in the rubber sleeve uh, and should prevent it from sticking to the rubber and prevent this kind of gunk from forming. Now I'm just going at this with the lint but you could just as easily use a little uh, brass brush that's not going to scratch the metal if it was really persistent just to get it shifted and then clean it up afterwards. So however you want to do it but that is what we need to do here. And then once they've uh, once they've been degunked, just give them a quick buff, and we're good to go. 
nice and shiny. Let's do the other one and then back to fitting it. And whilst I'm at it, I'm just going to do this. Now be careful with the dust that comes off these because some brake pads do contain asbestos. So I'm wearing a mask here now using a long bristle brush. Again, it's a uh, copper or like brass bristles, so it's not going to damage the steel that this thing's made of. And what we want to do is buff it back to a nice rust-free surface that we can then put some copper grease on to reduce friction. Starting to get there. This is a really, really important part, often overlooked especially if people have changed pads themselves. You really do need the proper tools and the proper grease to play with brakes. Otherwise, you can end up with all sorts of problems. Okay, I think we're good. I'll grease those up as we reassemble. Nice. Nice and shiny, I'll just move you in a little closer there. Now, what we need to do here is reattach the caliper bracket and that will hold on to the disc. In order to do this, we need to put some fresh thread locker using Loctite. This is the high strength one, 2700. Uh, it's really super important that you do use thread locker. So before you start this job, make sure you've got copper grease, make sure you've got the non-metal grease, and make sure you've got some thread locker. Don't need to go boogaloo with this stuff. It really is important to have some in. Okay, so the bracket hooks over the rotor, top and bottom, make sure that's located, and then fits on the inside of this mounting bracket. One by one, I'm just going to pop these in. to line up. I'm just going to put some thread locker on the other one now. that one in. Flash the torque settings up on the screen here now. This is from the Haynes manual. Now what I'm going to do here, very carefully using a uh, cotton bud or Q-tip if you're looking at this in America, is I'm just going to put some of this copper grease, avoiding the disc. It's really important to avoid the disc. And I'll just put some of that copper grease on the contact surfaces. I'll do the same around the back. Now you can uh, put this stuff on before you refit it. In my experience though, that leaves you with a few smears here and there. You want to try and avoid that if you can. Okay. Same on this top surface. Uh, it's super important when you're doing this to make sure that you don't contaminate the new pads. So they're a little bit dusty, but these gloves are uh, totally dry, free of grease. I'm just going to pop the uh, cable here for the ABS sensor so that's completely separated. And that's going to allow us now to have a good look at these discs and sorry pads rather 
if I look at the state of that, you can see here that, uh, that is quite a mess. Now, you have to be a bit careful with this because we don't want to uh, tear this rubber. So we're going to use a special tool to wind this back in. And whilst we're winding it back in, we don't know it's an ABS system anyway, so you can't push it back too far up the pipe. But we don't want to be squirting the dud um, brake fluid that's in the cylinder back into the system. We want that out of there and nice fresh stuff pumped back through. So I'm going to go and get a catch pan again. We're going to connect it up and I'll show you a whizzy little tool for uh, winding the uh, cylinders back in. Okay, so 11mm ring spanner on standby, just to open that up. So I'm just going to loosen that off here now. now finger tight. On. And I'm going to try in the first instance and just squeeze this back through. That's going a bit very, very slowly. Now I do have a tool to do this. And again, what we're trying to do here is drain out as much of this old crud as possible. Okay, now you can spend a clean fortune on rewind tools, all sorts of options available. Do you need them? Well, not really so much. I'm going to use a uh, standard G clamp kind of, kind of thing here. Uh, it's just going to gently squeeze that back in. Now, important to note that I have got my finger here holding on to the pipe out of which the nasty old brake fluid is going to squeeze. And if you're doing this, just change side from time to time. We don't need to go back far. As point of reference, this is one of the whizzy windback tools that I was on about. Does it save time? Hell yes. No question about that, it saves time. Do you have to have it? No. Is it doing any better a job? Well no, it's just doing the same job in a different way. You can pick them up for you know, a fair price on eBay. Those things are generally more used in uh, front calipers, which are sometimes two or even more um, cylinders. So I'm just going to lock that off at that point. I'm going to gravity bleed that later on. And obviously we now need to uh, uh, apply the new pad. But before I do that, I'm just going to brush around in here with a little wire brush, make sure that's nice and clean. careful not to uh, damage the, the rubber seal here. But I'm not seeing any signs of leakage. I think we're okay. Right, so next job is to apply the pad. So here's the replacement pad to go into that. Here's the rather sorry looking old one, which I suspect was actually factory. Way past its use by date there. And you can see here where it was actually rusted on. So. This is the new pad. Need to put some grease on the uh, parts that are going to um, 
slide along the carrier there because it slides from both sides. I'm going to use a uh, cotton bud again for that. I'm also going to put some of this copper grease on the, uh, the prongs. Just to make it a little bit easier to uh, ping this thing in. Okay, now super important not to get any grease at all on the face of the pad. So, it is worth sacrificing a pair of gloves at this point if you haven't got super clean ones already. Just make sure there is no grease or oil anywhere to be seen and when you're putting this back in be careful and what I can again just do to give us the best fighting chance of making this work I'm just going to put a bit of this copper grease around the uh, inside of the cylinder here as well again just to stop it rusting and binding And then, hopefully, I'm just checking one more time that my gloves don't have any grease on them. So I can now push this pad in without worrying about it. There we go. So, next job is to fit the new pad again just being super careful here not to get any grease or oil of any sort onto the face of the pad that lives So at this point, the two freshly polished pins need to go back into the back. So we'll be needing our 7mm hex key again. And I'll just change position so that you can look down once again on top of the caliper and see what's going on. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you one thing here. Now, these pads have a kind of, I'm guessing it's Kevlar or rubber or something, fitting on the back. Back in the day, that used to be metal on metal contact, and a lot of squeal and screech and weird noises from your brakes came because that was in contact with the outer plate. Um, this set didn't need any copper grease in between the two, but copper grease can help to reduce that if your particular brand of pads don't have that sort of rubbery backing. Okay, so here's the caliper, just gone back on. That is one of the rubber sleeves. Hex key threaded into the end there. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this uh, non-metallic permanent lubricant metal free here not to be mistaken for the copper grease, you can't mix these up. And I'm gonna a good old load of this onto the pin and I'm also gonna stick a load into the end of the hole. That way, when we pop this in, just give it a little bit of a twist. That's gonna keep things nicely lubricated moving forwards. I'm going to start this off by hand, I'll nip it up afterwards. It's just easier to feel that way when you've got it lined up right. And again, I'll flash up the torque settings for these, it's quite light for this. Now 
I shall bleed that in a sec. One last job first, we need to put the, uh, the anti-rattle pen back on. These things can be a real pain, but uh, take your time with them. Try and kind of set them in the right place before you start. And this is where my advice um, is that you have a really stout pair of pliers handy. Because if you can get it into that hole, just knock it in, job done. So it's got to go under this against that plate, around the back of these two flanges, under this against that plate. Pushes everything nice and uh, nice and tight. That's as it should be. Just make sure it's sitting flush on the front, and we are good to go. Okay, on with the bleeding. It is very important that you use the right spec of brake fluid here. It tells you on the cap, you use only dot four. You don't want brake fluid that's been sitting around open for a while I've actually decanted some from a new bottle here into an old bottle just for convenience pouring it's a bit of a pain if it's too full it spills all over the place and brake fluid is poisonous so you do not want it spilling all over the place and I'm just going to put the cap back on here but not tight I want that to be open because what we're going to do is rather than forcing it through or pulling it through with a vacuum we're going to allow gravity to do this job. It's just going to find its own level and gently push all the bubbles out the other end. Before we go pressing the brake pedal and all that other good stuff let's get the air out of this. So I've got a little spring clip on here to hold it all nice and tight. That should stop anything dribbling out around the sides here anywhere near our new pads or discs. We'll just crack that open. And uh, let gravity work its magic. Now what's going on here basically is that the uh, brake fluid in the header of the system is slowly filtering down and basically replacing the stuff that we squirted out earlier. If you just use a, uh, a rewind tool to force the old brake fluid back up the pipe, you've got old, worn, tired, burned brake fluid in your system still. Rather than doing that, open the bleed nipple and as you're winding the cylinder back, squirt it out. That way what we're getting through from the pipe when you pump the brakes again is clean, fresh. Um, fluid which makes all the difference. This stuff does have a shelf life. It does need to be changed as a routine service task. Now if you can see there the level is just starting to creep round so I can see that it's uh, slowly filling up. It is a slow process this so if you're doing it commercially this is probably not viable but uh, for home use this is I would say by far and away the easiest way to make sure that you don't have any air in the system. The bleed port is on the top of the cylinder for a very good reason uh, and really importantly here if you have a little bit of a gap around the edge of your rubber hose you can get the impression with vacuum tools or pressure systems or whatever that it's still got air in the system but it's actually air from around the side of the hose being drawn up rather than being in the system so you can waste a lot of brake fluid that way. This is nice and calm, sedate, it's not squirting anywhere, it's not blowing anywhere, there's no, no uh, spray of nasty poisonous chemicals to worry about, just nice and sedate. If you want to, you can give the pedal a pump, that'll speed things along. I'm just going to leave this five minutes or so and keep an eye on it. I've just raised the tube here, you can see the level see it there, the level rising and there are no bubbles in that whatsoever. However, I am going to use this basically just as a way of uh, cleaning the old, uh, or at least a good portion of the old fluid out of the system and then next time we do a full service we'll uh, just replace all of the brake fluid with fresh. 
Okay, I'm satisfied that there are no bubbles in there, but as I say, I'm just letting it go. I'm going to top up the header tank at the other end as well, and uh, just let it flow through for a sec. Then we can nip that up, pump the pedal until it's nice and firm, make sure it's uh, um, good and solid, and uh, move on to the other side. Okay, so that's now had about 10 minutes. Absolutely no bubbles coming out of it at all. Very happy with that. Just nip that back up. You want to be careful you don't uh, put it on too tight. Remember, it is hollow. I'm going to use the pliers to remove that little spring clip. That's the sort of thing you put on fuel pipes, by the way. Handy enough to have a few of those around. And. Uh, just put the rubber cap back on the bleed nipple. Plastic caps are in, torqued up. Caliper bolts are in, torqued up. Anti-rattle spring is in, new pads are in. go job done on to the other side so thanks very much for watching guys hope that's been useful to you if it has as always please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and i'll see you next time cheers